So the goal for today is to start turning this from a grandpa truck into something a little cooler. So the leveling kit I'm using is the Suspension Max. It's a little pricey, but it does some cool things. One, namely, obviously, uh, leveling the height of the truck out. And they have these keys which you can adjust by taking this out and rotating it to get the exact level you want. And it has some shock spacers. Then the coolest part, I think, the most important part perhaps, is these spacers for the diff. So I will drop the diff down and longer bolts to make sure that your CD axle angle is not too sharp. Insulation looks pretty straightforward, um, but you know how that goes. I'm not gonna do an install video. As far as the exact details, there's plenty of great videos and information on that. Uh, but I will show you the progress along the way. I have the torsion bar tool. It's basically just a modified C-clamp. Got that on eBay or something. Um, link below. And then just gotta grab all these tools. All right, I've got the tools laid out, different size wrenches and sockets. I grabbed short and deep for a few. Some anti -seize. I saw one of the install videos to get to the back of the diff, the top of the diff bolts, they were doing that. So I've got that. Got a hand ratchet for uh, backup. And then I've got the big Makita for the heavy work. Hopefully this will do it. Seeing it all lifted on the jack just makes you want to get a full-on lift kit. I mean, there's something cool about the hood being this high. <laughs> Here's a torsion bar tool. This just goes over the frame and then this screws up to tighten the key so you can release the bolts. So this is taking way longer than expected. I had to modify this eBay tool, grind off all the stuff on top, and then grind a huge notch there in the bottom to get it to fit up over the cross member there. And then I couldn't get the torsion bar out. So I had to go out to two stores and pick up an air hammer. At least it was on sale. And I've wanted one of these for a while, so glad to have it. And it's a good brand, so I want to cry once. But now that I got the old key out, we can put in one of the new keys. So what I was afraid of happened, the whole tool bent. Thankfully I was able to get it off. So I'm sure some of it was because of the cutting, but I have a feeling this would have happened probably otherwise. So I just went to AutoZone and rented the official tool. As you can see with the real tool, the profile is much different, much wider. So hopefully this is gonna make it quick and easy. And it was only 46 bucks, maybe I'll keep it. <laughs> So I ended up putting it in uh, A1, which is 1.7 to 2.5 inches, because 2.5 would have been way too much. Um, I put it back at the original, I put the adjustment bolt back in at the original height, and the truck was perfectly leveled. It was 42 and a half in the rear, 42 and a half in the front, 42 and a half in the front. But then the control arm was resting on the stop. So they recommend like a pencils width in there. So I put a pencil in there and I lowered the adjustment screw. So now I'm 41 and seven eighths. Uh, so it's a little lower in the front. Uh, I think that'll be enough room for now. What's nice is if I replace these control arms, I can crank it up a little bit higher, but I don't know that I'm gonna do that. I think, I think I'm gonna ride on the leveling kit for a while, I'll probably have to trim some of the bumper and do a little bit of a NorCal back here to get the wheels to fit. And then maybe in a year or two, I'll upgrade to uh, an actual full lift kit front and rear. I don't know if it's just the placebo effect, but I can tell it feels a little higher now, which is nice. One step away from the grandpa truck. And that took entirely too long. Get the, <laughs> I totally recommend getting the actual GM torsion bar tool. It was on and off in a second. I wouldn't have spent three hours um, grinding on that other one going into town and whatnot but uh so the right tool this would have been done in an hour instead it took me uh probably five with all the trips to town i uh, also recommend an air hammer if you don't have one try and get that torsion bar loose 
Uh, if you have a brand new truck, you might have to do that. So it's the next day and I'm back at it. Uh, it's been a lot easier this time uh, having the tools all sorted. Uh, I got the first key out. Well, I got the first key unbolted rather. I had to lower the adjustment screw a little bit first because uh, that was all the way maxed out. Uh, but I got that out. Now I'm gonna try and air hammer out the torsion bar. There we go. Definitely get one of these if you don't have one to do this. Okay, so the stock key is out as well as the retainer uh, and adjustment screw. So next up is getting the new uh, torsion key in. I've got it set up to A1. New key goes in just the way the old one came out. The other one definitely went in easier. back in yep okay get started Now the new keys are in. I'm gonna take out uh, the shock, put in the spacer so I gotta take out the bolt down here, and then these two up here. So you can support this with a jack real quick. Whenever you've got the wheel off or anything open, it's a good idea to take a look in and just check all your bushings and other stuff and see if there's anything wrong. Everything looks fine here, as far as I can tell. Might need to grease ball joints and stuff like that, but that's for another day. I don't want to hit this brake line. Let's see. Okay, I just want to make sure it's steady. Next up is these guys up in there. Now these guys are a real pain because you got to do it by hand. Take out these clips first. This is like the bendiest screwdriver ever. Live my life one quarter turn at a time. This is a 21 millimeter, in case you're wondering. So many, many moments later, I got that one out. So I'm just gonna pull it out and the shock comes out. So let's take this into the shop and drive out these bad boys. So the kit comes with these bolts and spacers. It's basically like a wheel stud that gets driven into the top of the shock. And then you put the spacer on to give you more clearance. And I didn't bring the nut in, but a good tip is to put the nut back on the top and drive it. But even then this kind of sticks out a little higher than the nut. Oh, I got the nut from the other one, good. So I had the nut from the other one yesterday, so I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna put it on just a little to give us a little more hitting area. There we go. And that one out. Tell I'm not a carpenter, by the way, a hammer. Now they say to flip it over and drive the new ones in, but good luck doing that. So here's a trick. You should put it in, put the new one in. Let's make sure you see this. Yep. Put the new one in. Can kind of give it one little whack to kind of get it started. So now that it's kind of in there, 
I just started, I'm gonna put this bolt on. Put the nut on rather, and then we're gonna use the impact to squeeze on, squeeze it on like this. We'll back it off so the shock will go back in before we put it up there I gotta put the spacers on let's get these started compress the shock a little bit Started pinching my hand a little bit there, gotta be careful. Oh, they're so high up there. Sometimes I feel like maybe engineers haven't turned a wrench before, because that's a pain. Although I get it, sometimes when I'm programming or designing, I'll leave notes in the file for the person to come after me, either apologizing because I was in a rush or explaining how it works, but I don't think an engineer can leave a note on here as to why there had to be no clearance. So as you can see, it's riding on the stopper. So we'll have to get about a pencil's worth of clearance in there, but uh, in order to do that, I gotta put the truck on the ground first. So I got the new wheel test fit, 20 by 10 fuel cyclone. They're like, they're fake directionals. I think it's looking pretty good. Let's see how much clearance we have back here. Uh, plenty of clearance back there. These are the all black edition. Check out the poke. Good, got a little bit of poke going on, about maybe an inch, two inches maybe. We'll see when it tires on. That's about as much as I'd want. There we go. Definitely gonna have to trim this. We'll see how much NorCal I have to do in the back. And then you wanna go to, just very, very gently in the cross pattern to get these started. Now it's time for these hub caps with the screw cover, the bolt covers that screw on themselves. Now I can get the jack stand out and lower the truck down. All right, with the wheel back on, I can calibrate the height. You can see it's a little bit off the bump stop, but that's still too close. I have about a pencil on the other one, so need a little bit more. So let's get a measurement. Again, suspension hasn't had time to settle all that stuff, but yeah, we're at 142 and an eighth. Need to come down half inch. So I'll adjust down here. For height, a little bit low, like a, like a 16th, but I'm okay with that for now. All right, next up is putting the spacers on the diff. Now that's gonna be fun getting under there. I don't know if I can, so I'm not gonna film it. I'll check back later. Whew, all right, so that was pretty wild. Uh, you're definitely gonna want a flex head ratchet for that. Uh, I had to use all sorts of combinations of wrenches and reaches and, oh my goodness. The diff is now lowered and we get a better angle on that CV axle. So let's take a look. So you can see the CV axle, uh, they're all lowered by that half an inch or inch, whatever it is. Get a little more play in that boot there. Well, that's it for this video. Uh, just beginning, the next up will be wheels and tires. That'll be another video and uh, more content coming soon. 
on the Silverado and other stuff going on around the homestead. So as always, thanks for watching. Please like, favorite, subscribe if you like the video and want to see some more. Uh, until next time, keep standing up for what's right and may God bless you.